Next up, we're going to look at range of a linear transformation. Before we look at uh, linear transformations, let's just think about range of just plain old functions for a second. Say you have the function f of x equals, uh, let's say, negative absolute value of x. If you were to graph that, it would look like this. And this is a function, if we wanted to write out the domain and codomain, it maps the reals to the reals. But notice, you don't get all of the reals as outputs. You only get the negatives and zero together. So the range of this is just going to be everything from minus infinity up to and including zero. So down here, we're going to look at the same sort of idea, but we're going to do it for uh, linear transformations. So let T be a linear transformation that maps V to W. And the range here is going to be the subset of W consisting of the images of V. And this is another way you can write that out. And that's the same thing we did up here. The range here is just the negative, uh, the negative numbers together with uh, zero. That's a subset of R. And they're the numbers that this uh, function actually spits out. So I want to look at, let's see, 201, 202, and 203. I've got three examples here. The first one I want to kind of do from first principles, just from definitions, and kind of look at what happens. And then we'll, uh, after we do that, we'll, we'll talk about maybe a, a more efficient way to do, do these. So first up, let's just look at this. T maps R2 to R2, and it's defined by T of X is equal to this matrix times X. So let's play with this for a minute. Let's say you have t of, I'm going to call it x, y here, write it out like that. If you take this and multiply it by x, y, what you wind up getting is, let's see, for this you get uh, 1x plus 4y. And then when you do the bottom, you get 5x plus 20y. Okay, so those are all the images that you get. You stick in x, y, it, it spits out x plus 4y and 5x plus 20y. The thing to notice here is this is five times this up here. So let's, uh, let's write that out. So this is equal to... Um, like that. Or in other words, uh, the points you get off of here, the y coordinate, the y coordinate is five times the x coordinate. So you get y equals 5x. So that means, and that describes the range. The range is all the sets of points where y is equal to 5x. So this thing is only going to give you points that lie on the line y equals 5x. All right. Um, so the range is just this line. So it's a set of points on the line y equals 5x. And you might think that's a lot of trouble and uh, kind of a pain to write out, and you'd be correct. Uh, there's a better way to do this. So let's look at these uh, facts down here. The range of T is a subspace of the codomain W. If you go back up here, the codomain was R2, and the range was this line right here. And sure enough, that line is a, a subspace of R2, because remember, the subspaces of R2 are lines through the origin. And this next uh, fact is good. It says uh, if t of x is equal to a times x, the range of t is the same thing as the column space of a. So let's go back up here and look at the column space of this. If we were to find the column space, remember what you do is you row reduce it. If we do that, we get 1, 4, 0, 0. Because the only thing you have to do here is do... Um, row 2 minus 5 row 1, and it'll zero that bottom row out. And so if you look at this, 
we've got a leading one here, so we're going to come back up here, and we'll get a basis of the column space of this. Consists just of the vector 1, 5. Remember, for column space, you got to go back to the original, the original matrix. And so 1, 5 is a vector that lies on this line. And so the um, a basis of the column space is also a basis of the range. And in general, this is a much better way of describing the range, is by giving a basis of it, instead of going through and working this stuff out and figuring this out. So in general, when we answer these questions of uh, find the, instead of, instead of wording it as find the range, we're going to say find a basis of the range. So I want to do uh, examples 202 and 203. And as I frequently do, I'm going to do these out of order. Let's do 203 first. So all I have to do is find the um, find a basis of the column space here. So let's row reduce this thing. So we've got six, four, two, negative two. Ten, 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 zero. And then fourteen, eight, two, negative six. All right, so we've got that. Remember when you find the um, when you find the uh, basis of the column space, you row reduce this. And let's see, we've got uh, one zero minus one minus one. 0, 1, 2, 1, and then uh, 0, 0, 0, 0. All right, so the important thing is we've got a leading one here and here, and we don't have a, a third one. So that means that this and this together form a basis. Six four ten, or what am I saying? Six six ten fourteen, and then four ten eight. So this basis here is uh, two dimensional. So what this means is our range is actually just a plane. in R3. So which plane is it? Well, the easiest way to describe it is by giving you these two basis vectors. You can get any point in the plane by taking uh, taking linear combinations of those. Okay, let's go up and do 202. Uh, 202, we're, we're doing really the same thing here. Uh, this time we've got T maps R3 to R3. Find a basis of the range of T. Okay, so to find a basis of the range, it's again just a basis of the column space. So we'll row reduce this thing, and I might actually have this one already in here, an octave. Let's see, two five zero. Yeah, that's it. So if I row reduce this, it gives me an identity matrix. So it row reduces to this. We've got a leading one in every column. That means we've got to hang on to all three columns as our basis of the of the column space or range. So we've got two zero one negative one five negative one negative one and zero one one. So that is a perfectly good answer to this question.
of course, when I word it like that, it may, means, you know, what's another uh, answer? Well, if you think about this for a second, um, the basis is three-dimensional. Or, I'm sorry, the, the basis has three vectors. So the uh, range is three-dimensional. It's a 3D subspace of R3. And what does that mean if it's a 3D subspace of R3? Um, it's got to be all of R3. So if we wanted to, we could say instead of using those three vectors as our basis, another basis would be Well, we could pick any basis that we wanted from R3. So pick any three vectors that are um, that don't lie in the same plane. Well, the nicest basis would just be the standard basis. So since it's all of R3, we can pick that out as a standard basis, and we're done. And that's, uh, that's pretty much it for finding the uh, a basis of the range. So uh, we'll stop this video here.